Today we're going to ruin a perfectly good Edelbrock intake with a plasma cutter. So here's the intake. It's a Edelbrock Torker 2. I'm using it because I needed a low rise single plane intake. Um, and most likely it's just going to be a temporary solution. Picked it up off of eBay for 60 bucks and uh, later found some other solutions that would have worked but have been about $200. Anyway, here's my problem. I got some new heads for my Jag. Turbo small block. It had a set of double humps on it, and they made plenty of power, but uh, they would need to be rebuilt. So I bought the other heads. Well, here's the situation. This gasket matches the heads. So you see the ports are nowhere near what they need to be. In fact, right here you can see the edge of the port comes almost to the edge of the flange. So I said we were going to ruin this intake, but truth be told, I've already done it. It still needs some work. A little cleaning up, but you see where I've raised the ports. So this is the intake that was on the car. Um, it's one of my first throttle bodies with uh, eight injectors making it a throttle body injection setup. And I want to convert it to multi-port because I really just haven't had time or money to test this setup and I know multi-port works. So this is a big block manifold that I converted to multi-port like I'm going to be doing to the Torker 2. It has eight individual injectors, one in each port. I've machined the uh, intake, weld in some three quarter inch bar stock and then on the bridge port drill it out to accept the fuel injectors. This is one of my later throttle bodies. Uh, not quite there yet, still has some errors in the code where it's not coming out as nice as I'd like for it to. 68,000 lines of code, and uh, so I'm still learning how to do that. Um, it has a nice small throttle position sensor under this cover, no big ugly plastic one. Um, double sealed needle roller bearings, they're not on it, but it has billet uh, linkage and billet throttle return spring mounts. It just has a simple uh, radius for the bell mouth on the top and then underneath it has an elliptical transition and of course it's going to get polished up okay so uh, let's see about welding up this lid I have no idea what I'm doing uh, all I know is what I've learned here Got my old Synchroid 350 going. Uh, recently watched a video from Jody on uh, weldingtipsandtricks.com on welding cast aluminum to make me feel a little bit better about what's about to happen. But uh, I'll probably edit out the really ugly parts. So you're thinking, he's welding on a perfectly good intake, uh, what if you're on it? So what? I paid 60 bucks for it. Uh, 60 bucks is well worth the experience.
So here it is, welded up, and you can see the metal's up above the gasket now. And uh, it's amazing how quickly this cools off. So and now I have this surface here that is going to need to be smoothed down, and you might think you need to chuck it up in the mill and hit it with the fly cutter. That'd be the correct thing to do, but um, I'm just going to take it down with this little sander here, this grinder, and uh, and then just lay a flat file on it. And that flat file will show you all the high and low spots. And so if it needs more, I'll just build it up with the welder. Like there's a spot right here I need to do with this. And, uh, and then just lay the file on it and it'll just make it nice and smooth. One quick thing, um, I don't know if you noticed, but I had this clamp to here. Um, if you're like me and you use your bridge port as a workbench, you probably don't. Just make certain you don't clamp your uh, ground to the handles because then uh, you may destroy your bearings or, as in my case, my ground ball screws. Okay, I said I was going to use this. I changed my mind. I'm going to rough it in with this because it's bigger and flatter. So I'm going to stop here, I haven't ground it down flat yet, uh, so that when I weld it back together, uh, if it warps, I'll have some meat left here to grind on. And let's set the gasket on here. And you can see what we have to do. So the center needs to be ported back and thinned out here, the outsides need to come out, the bottom needs to go down, and most of all, the top needs to go up. So um, I'm going to mark it, and we're going to cut it with a plasma cutter. Okay, so I've marked it, and uh, this seemed to work pretty well over here. I'm just going to cut out on these lines, take these two pieces completely out. Um, they're going to be raised up like this to fill the gap, but while I have them out, I'm going to hog out the ports and uh, try to port them, port especially the center piece here, thin it out and uh, get back up in here and clean the intake out. that these will get cleaned up the ports are going to get hogged out these will get cut out to match I'll just do that with a die grinder and uh, weld it back together and it'll look like this this one still needs some work but the plan is to clean this up and then go back and either sandblast it or paint it and try to make it look like it was uh, not modified so uh, that's enough for today I'll probably finish modifying all the ports and then the next video of this will be converting it to multi-port. Thanks for watching.